Let's yeah, go ahead and go. set it off correctly. Wave distortion yeah, in the yeah, building! Yeah. Fuck yeah. There we go. Jace, my co-host today is my good homie, uh, Joseph Barba, a.k.a. JB, JB Music. Uh, good oh, yeah. times, man. He's, he's a regular around here. Uh, so you're the newest member. You're the newest member of Waves, correct? Yeah. How did, how did yeah, that all dude. come about? Yeah. Dude, a, a Craigslist ad. I'd actually, I've, I've played drums for a really long time, but I've never really uh, been in like a professional band or had the opportunity to play with any musicians who were trying to take it serious just past like, you know, just casual jamming. Um, and so when this opportunity came about to audition, I kind of reached out to them. Loved the sound of the first uh, Race Against Time record that came out in 2020 um or 2021 something well i, I, I can't remember 2021 but um, it was the debut yeah yeah 2021 it was the debut record uh and that was actually linked like in the uh in the posting for for uh, needing a drummer and so i i kind of spun the whole record absolutely loved it loved the sound really loved joe's voice uh brendan's riffs the every everything just sounded really good even even Glenn's bass stuff and and just the complete sound was uh, really attractive to what I was wanting to kind of delve into for like a debut project, so to speak. So it kind of worked out um, in that regard and got an audition and was able to work out some of the tunes uh, prior to even the audition with just me and Brennan. And that kind of was able to sharpen the tool set a little bit and kind of get things going uh, pretty quickly there. How long have you been playing in general? Uh, I've been playing for about 20 years now. I'm 24. I started playing when I was about four. Um, so yeah, right around, right around like the 18 to 20 ish. There was like hiatuses where I didn't play, um, as much, but I would say I've been playing non completely nonstop for probably like at least six to eight years straight as of right now. So at this point, if, if the band says, Hey, we're, we're jamming this song right now during practice, you can play anything that they have in their catalog oh oh yeah for no no doubt no doubt and and there was kind of a transitional period um where we were working on the on the new tunes and kind of infusing the songs from the race time debut record and kind of formulating more of a set um as well as sharpening the tunes along with it you can kind of kill two birds one stone with uh rehearsing the tunes as well as formulating which set as you're kind of fine tuning um the new songs as well as the old songs with as a complete unit so that's given us a lot of time to kind of um calibrate and get things going the way we want want to get things going i don't think i asked or i don't know if you told me but where are you heading right now dude so i'm in a i'm in a parking garage and they're chaotic as fuck at sac state so i'm like trying to find my car so. <laughs> no worries <laughs> Uh, like, fuck, dude. JB, uh, ask a question real quick while I while I queue up uh, a wave song. Are you originally from Sacramento? No, I was born and raised in uh, Atwater, California. Um, it's a city along the 99. It's actually a really small town, probably like 25, 28,000 people ish. And um, I was raised, or yeah, born and raised in Atwater. Moved to sat to Sacramento when I was 21. Uh, actually to transfer to Sac State and um, there's not like a huge music scene in Atwater that was like the main reason I never really was privileged enough to play with other musicians it was kind of just like uh, doing my own thing with the instrument rather than uh, trying to search and put something together musically with other people so uh, moving to Sacramento was what really started sparked that idea for me uh, as far as like getting a situation going uh, with with a band and uh, playing with musicians. How long in between moving to to Sacramento was the time frame between finding finding waves from the move? Oh, um, well, when I when I had first, I guess when I moved back, I during COVID, I, I 
Oh, he's getting deeper in that parking garage. Down there for... What's that? Oh, we, we, we slowly... Oh, as you keep going further in the parking garage, we lose you a little bit. It goes, like, in and out. Oh, no fucking way. Damn it. Sorry. That's all right. For the most um, part, we're I good. See my, I see my car, though. I'm, I'm about to be I'm about to be out of here. Okay, be careful. But, um... Yeah, yeah, no, no shit. Uh, but, yeah, it was actually, like, a, a longer time frame. I moved when I was 21, and I wasn't really even thinking about it until I had moved back after Houston. So I I had moved to Houston in August of 21, and then I moved back in July of this year. And then I would say maybe, like, the last week of July after I kind of locked in my place for August 1st, um, that was like right around the time I auditioned. So it all, it happened super quick. Like I hit, I hit Brandon up within a few weeks. We like ran through first initial set of the tunes, just me and him. And then I think two weeks from that point was the audition. And, uh, ever since then we've been, uh, we've been rocking and rolling, fine tuning. Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to throw on uh, guardians enemies real quick while you buckle up and be oh, safe and uh, we'll, we'll jump back in it. So when you were when you were four and you and you picked up drumsticks, I imagine that was your your parents saying like, "Oh, you should you should pick up an instrument." But why the drums? So that's actually an interesting story. So my dad, um, my dad grew up in like the hair metal era. He graduated high school in '84, and so um, he was like influenced by bands like Motley Crue and Triumph and Van Halen and. Um, Queensryche and fucking like the entire Dokken, like bands like that. And um, so I grew up on, on like that shit and he was super into guitar and I actually started playing guitar a little younger than when I started playing drums. I had like this littler guitar and for a while I was like juggling the two, like trying to learn uh, like guitar riffs as well as like learning drums. And I started them around the same time and i quickly noticed that i was progressing like way more with drums like i was i was already able to play like full beats full songs and like with guitar i was just like always getting frustrated and uh, could never i could never grasp guitar like how i wanted to because my dad played guitar. I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bro? Brennan and waves his torch in the building. Yeah, hell yeah. Woo! We were we were just talking about uh, why he picked up the the drums instead of a different instrument, and essentially how he became the new the dr new drummer of the band and uh, his back history and whatnot. But Brennan, how are you, sir? Oh, we are fantastic, man. I'm actually in the studio right now with you know who that guy is, right? My dude! Hey! We got a celebrity in the building! Celebrity in the building, my good buddy Nick Miller. What's up, Nick? How are you, dude? I'm doing Nick, fantastic. Up? I appreciate up, you. Nick? Can we can we hear some some brand new some brand new Skylet no one's ever heard before? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But... Yeah, let's play it real quick. Uh, <laughs> How you doing? Play. How you doing, man? How's life? Dude, it is great, man. I'm uh in the studio with my boys, the Waves of Distortion guys. Working on working on a new single. Working on what can we what can we what are we allowed to know? Man, yeah. What what are we allowed to say? We're so we're on working on album. we're working on an album. Or EP, six or song album. EP. And Jace, we're getting ready to uh, hit the studio soon. I'm super stoked. Yeah. So am I. So am I. Yeah. We're gonna be tracking drums for the new EP, six song. Uh, so we're yeah we're i think um glenn and joe are gonna be polishing up the their parts like here later on in the month and then um yeah by the end of the year man uh this thing's gonna be ready to go i can't wait i can't wait for everybody to hear it it's, it's, is this a first for local <laughs> smoke out to have somebody in a car driving it is no, a no. second. It is a second. A second. A second. Number yes. Two, buddy. And I was I was quite Woo! concerned with our with the first guest as I, I am with Jace. I know. I jumped <laughs> on a, what the hell? I see a steering wheel. I see the camera going. I am slightly concerned. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. need you to yeah. be yeah. very safe. Pull yeah. over. Yeah. Are you like? Do you have a hot date or something? What's going on, bro? Like, what if it's just green? He's not even really driving. <laughs> 
<laughs> just <laughs> no, I'm going. I'm going down. Uh, I'm going down La Riviera, so I'll be home in like one minute, and then I'll I'll finish this thing out. Park. No we'll worries. No it. worries. Stay in the car park. Right. <laughs> Nick, how do you, Nick, how do you how do you balance all the stuff that you got going on in your life with with all with all the bands that you're working on, the mixing, the mastering, the touring, working on new ASD? How do you balance all that stuff? Do you sleep? Dude, a little bit. I get a little bit of sleep, but I get just enough. Um, but I love staying busy, dude. Uh, yeah, man. Like four the in the bit, morning, dude. You get up at four in the morning. I do. I go to sleep early though. Yeah. I'm a grandpa, dude. I, I go to bed early. For sure. But, uh, man, I've been so busy, but I'm so grateful, dude. And I, I mean, like working with these guys has been so awesome. And, uh, yeah, dude, it's just, it's awesome to stay so busy, man. I, I really enjoy it. It, uh, keeps me out of trouble. That's good. And I, and it's a lot of fun. I get to do some really fun stuff and work on some cool music with cool people. So super, super grateful. I love that. I love that. Brennan, uh, when you first met Jace, how did you know he was the one as the replacement? Oh, because his professionalism, man. I mean, they got, I don't know how much in the story you are with him, like how much you guys know. You know, like he's never really been in a band. I don't know if you got to that part yet. And, but he came in just super like professional, like he was a, a seasoned vet, you know? And when he jumped in, he just, he had a beautiful email that he sent us and it was just, super professional it wasn't like you know hey bro like i've been rocking for 40 years bro i can slay <laughs> this shit, you know? but i can only play on sundays after fucking 11 you know and so he just came in he's like hey this is what i do this is what i am and you can see if you go to his youtube channels jace alcazar if you go to his youtube channels you can see that the dude's putting in work you know what i mean and he's just he's just a good vibe to be around so as soon as i met him he was just super like hella nice you know so he hasn't played in a band, so he's not hella jaded yet, like the rest of us, you know what I mean? Who have like mania, ego maniacs and we're like hella jaded and like, fuck you. But he's just super nice and he just wants to work. That's all. So I knew as soon as, as soon as we sat down and played for 10 seconds, I was like, this is the dude. I like, I can dig it. Uh, Polyphia is quite intricate and tricky to play. So I, I'd like to start with this one. It is a short, it is a short, but uh, yeah, I can see. I can how see could you sure. not? How could you not want that? Yeah, I, I <laughs> totally, I get it. I get it. How could you not want that? We're very fortunate to have him in this band for sure. And as soon as he gets in with Nick, it's just gonna be beautiful. The stuff that we're writing right now is amazing right now. So, uh, yeah. When, when cool. you guys, when you guys work with Nick, do you do you come with really rough demos, or do you kind of start from scratch and and take his advice and create a song right then and there? Uh, we've done it a multiple ton of ways. I've come in with stuff pretty much laid out, and then you know he'll be like, "Yeah, we'll maybe try this on that part." You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll build it. And dude, sometimes I've come in and I was just like, "Hey, like we we wrote this one song, dude, it's so badass." And I came in with this idea. And all I had was one riff. You know what I mean? Just one little riff. But I had this like really like depth to any kind of vibe that I was feeling. You know, and we just built this piece just out of thin air, you know. So every time we're in the studio together, it seems like within like six hours, he built the magical. Because as soon as we, like if we're starting something and it just doesn't vibe, we just shut it down right then and there. You know what I mean? So we've actually worked on songs for like six hours. That was garbage. And then jumped on another ship and within two hours had a badass piece. You know what I mean? So it's just... It's it's written all different ways. Yeah, we we've, we've done a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, like we've yeah we've started songs. You brought in a full idea, and we'll just kind of polish that, or we'll start from like have a riff, and you're like, what do you think? And we just collab. Yeah. Until you know whatever we've done everything, and yeah. then um, what to your point of sometimes we'll write for six hours, and we're not not stoked. That usually like nine times nine times out of ten that will lead. Just something really different, really awesome. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes we gotta get through some, I don't know yeah, what, you know, yeah, <laughs> thick water, man, some, some mud. But it'll get us to that point to mm -hmm. to something that we're really stoked on. We even had a song done and we completely rewrote it. We call it re it's the song name plus reimagined because we wrote it, tracked it, vocals, everything, 
and then we just totally squashed it and revamped it a whole nother way. And now we got to write a whole new vocal session to it. So, you know, the, the reality is, is it's a game. That's what we look for at the, at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I can take it. it. You know. I, I have a I have a pro and then a con. The pro is we're about to do some trivia, and Brennan and Jace, you guys get to pick the topic. By the way, uh, the gentleman to your left, Brennan. Who, oh, that's fucking Glenn Evans. Glenn, 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 what, Glenn Evans. What's up, brother? How we doing? Give me a hell yeah! I gotta properly intro. We gotta do it right every time. We're cel we're celebrating waves of distortion day, but this so much not a celebration. Fellas, I'm on I'm on the Spotify. I want to eagerly tell tell everybody watching all the details about the band. I scrolled down and there ain't shit on the bio. What's going on with the Spotify bio that has no information whatsoever? Our marketing manager. They're mysterious, dude. Yeah. Next year we won't be so mysterious, bro. Okay. Okay, cool. So it, okay. the fix the fix will be coming for sure. Uh to do the trivia, the cool thing is you guys get to pick the topic. And then I'm gonna have JB ask a couple of questions while I search some some trivia for you. But uh, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get Game stumped. Of Game of Thrones. You sure? Yeah. Because there's some deep trivia, I'm sure. Be, oh, I, I think all three of us. Yeah. We get deep. We get deep around here. So I will. <laughs> So nice to, to Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones heard. JB, rattle off a couple questions for the boys. Let me look up something real quick. Yeah, so my question is, it sounds like you guys are just working right now, but do you guys have any planned shows or any gigs that you have lined up currently? No, we're just finishing this album and working on our, our set, getting Jace up to speed. He's, he's come a long way with the first album, plus he's got to write this whole new album. So there's just a ton of work to do, especially after we get all the everything written, uh, our live set. You know, it's, we're gonna go ham on just having our opening set, our headlining set, middle of the pack set. You know what I mean? And right we're doing a lot of things different now with you know all this ambient sound, all these things going on. So me and Jace are running in here with the click and having different different backing tracks going. So it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You yes, know, we're not even. But next year we're going full regard. Oh, yeah, right on. To Balls to wall, to full on too, out. Yeah. To circle back to that, too, I think uh, we were kind of going over that uh, when I was circling, pacing through the parking garage. That, that's that been a huge um, addition to the rehearsal as far as, like, when we first started with the tracks, it was more so just, like, getting the feel and getting the timing down. Um, but with the click, that's moved to, like, orchestrating a set, like incorporating backing tracks and click. That's moved towards practicing the tunes and fine tuning them with the click along with uh orchestrating a set with how the tunes are flowing through each rehearsal so it's really cool do you normally play to a click or is that something that's kind of abnormal for you at the moment i've all uh shit probably for about a year and a half now i've i've only played to a click in my ears yeah but he's impeccable dude his timing is fucking is perfect that was one thing that I noticed about him when we started playing, just how he did not fluctuate on time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just everything, just boom, 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 even without a click, which is huge. Because sometimes I feel as a guitarist, I'm chasing drummers around a little bit. Brandon, did you bring hot sauce? <laughs> oh, fuck. Because <laughs> if I stump you right now, you're taking some hot sauce, bro. That's that's how we do. <laughs> okay, that's some hot I, don't, I don't have hot sauce. Oh, my God. But I have some salsa from the fucking Tagarita. We'll we'll <laughs> allow it. We'll allow it. This is your Game of Thrones trivia. No, so this guy's he, got three of them. Here we go. In Game of Thrones, we start off. We start off with an easy one that determines how much you know about it. What is the name of Rob Stark's wife? Say it again. No, in real life. No, Rob. No, Stark. no, no. In the show. Shit. She caused all the problems. I knew no, these were gonna there's so much going on. I, I can't hear it. I can't hear my bad this is this some background noise. For like the third time. Yeah, remember you got married for it? Or whatever. Or uh, I see her. He was supposed to get married to the uh, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a T. Mm. Bob Stark. 
Who'd you say? No, I'm saying Rob Stark. Rob, yeah, <laughs> Rob Stark's wife. It starts with a T. Yeah, the brother, the brother, the first king. I see her. I know, I, I see, see her, her too. She was naked and beautiful. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Hallie. Wait, who'd you say? Talia. Talia? Yeah. You are so, so close. That is not correct, though. It is Talisa. 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 Had you get it correct, we would have spun this wheel right here. Brendan, enjoy your hot sauce, my friend. I mean, your salsa. Excuse me, your salsa. Well done. Excellent. Unfortunately, it also landed on hot sauce for me on the wheel. my eyes over. It landed on hot sauce for me also. So, Brendan, as a, as a good sport, I'll let you pick a number one through fourteen. Pick a number one through fourteen. And I'm gonna do some hot sauce also. Who's picking? Uh, just somebody call out a number. Don't matter. Twelve. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mount Fuji Magma, and it's probably the third hardest one I have in this whole thing, so it's it's fairly hot. It's a good call. That's a, oh, like, why? Uh, I don't know. I love... <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's, it's fun. Uh, talk to me about Odyssey. Well, how, did, how did Odyssey come about as far as from a writing perspective? Oh, that was one that started with a riff the first riff that was actually a fun one because uh that started out with the first riff we built it but the chorus was just not vibing and we had we had actually shut down production and i was in the truck getting ready to leave and all of a sudden that uh chorus came to me and you were like chilling doing something else i'm like hey can i come back in dude i got this course he's like let's fire it up while i'm talking and so that's basically how that song started, just a verse and then a whole day of doing stuff and not being happy. And then just boom, something happened, came back in. And then we completely like re-recorded everything around that that chorus. And that's how Odyssey came. You know? So it, it, and, you came back in to capture the moment, essentially. Exactly, exactly. Which that is something smart. That was the one I was, there. was at the buzzer, dude. Not the buzzer, we that's were, right. We had gone wrote all day and we we're like okay let's come back to it yeah. and i remember i heard a knock on my door and you're like dude i got it <laughs> <laughs> wait a second i got it hell yeah well, let's jam it let's let's uh let's check it out let's see what we're talking about here you guys if you're feeling the music you're watching please support waves distortion hit that follow button I love how your vocals have such, such a like a theatrical style of how how he sings. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's unique yeah. and cool in its own way. It gives him like it's like a little That's bit all... of a niche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody was talking about was it dream theater kind of reminds him like the very very theatrical music, you mm -hmm. know, because what kind of what we fall into. But we have like a lot of different varieties. So this album is gonna have like I think it's gonna run the gamut on a lot of different uh flavors you know genres that we love you know all in that high octane but you know we're going to be doing a lot of like mel very melodic stuff to shit like eclipse just like balls to the wall in your fucking face you know what i mean on the on the ep is there any you don't have to reveal them but is there any like surprises that could be expected like a feature here uh, something we wouldn't expect, like a little bit of a different sound on this song versus the traditional waves of distortion sound. Is there anything you can reveal? Well, it's going to be completely different than anything that anybody who's followed us has heard. I can, I know that for a fact. But what do you think? I absolutely agree with that. I was going to say, it is such a cool body of work because mm -hmm. everything is different. And it's like, it's like a journey, man, start to finish. It's really, really cool because it's it's very cohesive, but yet every song has a little something something different, which is really exciting, I mm -hmm. think. And like like you were just saying uh, about the vocals, like uh, the vocalist Joe is so, he's so fun to work with, and he is so he, I mean he'll 
he'll try anything and, and get like the best takes and, and really bring out that the theatrics in the performance. He's so fun to work with. It's, it's And awesome. he's got a hell of a scream. So we're going to incorporate a lot of that, I think, on this album as well. And his scream yeah. is insane. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely gnarly. He, like, he says, teases it a little bit in some songs, but he doesn't go like balls okay. to the wall, like crazy, crazy screaming or like I mean, he kind of exactly. just blah, throws it in. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to showcase a lot more of that this time around, you know. Is there a tentative timetable for this release? I, I imagine sometime a couple of months into 2023 or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, if we want it out as soon as possible because we want to get the show on the road. But at the end of the day, we just want to get every everything right. You know what I mean? Of we course. just want to make sure everything sounds right, production values right, takes are right, performances are right, you know, all that stuff and then release it. And that's why I think I we decided just to go with six songs for like an EP rather than a full length album, because we want to really take the, that good body of work that Nick just said and really fine tune that and make sure that that, you know, is super dialed and then we'll release it and then we'll go tour the shit out of it. Where, Hopefully with the where are you planning on touring? Like, uh, I know that all has to be set up, but uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on where you want to travel? Well, Everywhere. I mean, being that we're no one, we just got to go and hit the, you know, I call it the bar tour, you know, the, the dive bar tour. You know what I mean? We're just going to go everywhere and play. I mean, big shows, little shows. We just got to go out and do it the old, you know, guerrilla marketing and just get out there and, you know, like three people to 500 to 1,000, just, just play. Get our name out there. So there's no real, like, are you going to go here or there? We're just going to go, whoever lets us play, we're going to come in and do our job. Jace, uh, I actually muted you, so you're gonna have to unmute yourself. But uh, uh, regarding the Race Against Time album, <clears throat> which one, which track on there was the hardest for you to learn? You have to unmute, though. You have to unmute. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. I remember. I remember rap being. Um pretty hard when we finally like dialed in the timing we were actually rehearsing it um a little under tempo for a little bit and then uh we kind of locked in the definitive tempo of what it, what it was supposed to be and that was like not necessarily a relearning all the parts were kind of dialed in but it was more so just like um adapting the learned parts to the polished tempo that was probably like one of the harder harder elements of uh learning that um and then even Guardians, there's like a funky groove, a uh, funky little double hi hat groove um, in the beginning. It's, that's kind of hard. And then Chemical Dependency, Chem D. Um, there's a really like intricate double bass section transition in uh, at the end of the second chorus that was like pretty difficult for me at first. And yeah. there's a bunch of tempo changes, you know. This this album yeah, there is. going yeah. straight forward, you know, one tempo all the way. The first album had like. Fucking signature changes, tempo changes, all throughout. Yeah, yeah. I like how he had a really elaborate answer too. Like he would say exactly what section and spot and describe on like what part of the kit was confusing or causing the trickery, if you will. Uh, we've got a little bit more time. I definitely want to play one more song. I'm gonna let you guys pick the song though. Anything in your catalog that we haven't played that you think we should hear? Uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try to stump you one more time. By the way. We got to bounce, though. Okay, BJ? We're going to bounce out. Oh, you guys got to roll? With... Yeah. We got to get back to work. This guy costs money, dude. It ain't free to be That's here. true. <laughs> it's true. He's expensive. I get it. I get it. Um. <laughs> well, I appreciate right, you dropping in. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of your day. Nick, good to see you again, brother. Good to see you, brother. Cheers. And uh, Jace, we'll wrap up. We'll do a couple more with you then, if that's okay. Cool. Yeah, of course. Of course. Hell yeah. So then, Jace, I guess, same question. What what one song have we not played from Waves that you think we should uh, we should end on as far as, like, a high note? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Dude, Lotus is a fucking killer song. Not only, That's a killer song to play, but that's also just... Uh, um, that's a song I remember when I first, like, spun the record. I was like, dude, this song is killer. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Let's dive in. Lotus. Uh, Jace, just a couple more questions. We'll let you go. What's uh, what's just a oh, dude, of course, of fun, course. a fun hobby that you have on the side when you're not working on music, where you're not worried about school? Uh, I I really 
enjoy um, working out. Uh, I try to. I, I try to be. I, I'm in school right now, and so um, we're in a very like my major is a very tight knit program, and so I have a huge like. I don't know, demanding social presence as far as like as far as that goes. So there's like a nice uh, contrast with kind of the way my life is right now as far as like music's kind of one thing and I'm as I'm sure it is for a lot for many other musicians out there in the local in the local scene. Joining, we're going to let you go but uh, congratulations on joining Waves of Distortion and uh, appreciate you guys. just being yeah. a cool I love dude in general. Guys are, I I love what you guys are doing man. It's you guys got an awesome page. I love like the versatility of what goes into what you guys do. So it's uh honors mine. Uh, thank you guys for having us on, allowing us to talk about upcoming works and uh, allowing me to, to get some time with you guys. It's been great. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for the kind words, dude. Oh, dude, of course. Of course. I'll be watching. I'll Hell be watching. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Enjoy the rest Cheers, of your day. Man. Jace Cheers, Thank you, and Waves yes, of sir. Distortion. Yeah. Hell yeah.